Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the weekly reading for the week of the full moon in Sagittarius. I'm recording this on Sunday, June the 12th. It's the 12th today. And I feel like there's so much to say. There's so much coming up this week. It's going to be... <laughs> It's gonna be intense, but before I even start in on what's coming up, I want to take a minute to like reflect about where we've been and what just happened. <laughs> um, so yesterday was the Venus-Uranus conjunction, and I'm really still feeling that today, right? Of course, that doesn't just last one day, that ripples out for many days. And just to share how that unfolded for me personally is my husband and I kept getting into these spats, like just arguing about stupid shit and we were just triggered and just arguing with each, with each other. And then we kept going like, hey, like, wait, pause, 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 like hold the show, right? Why are we arguing? We're being insane. Like, this is not like us. Um, and we could tell that we were just like being snippy for no reason and it was just really dumb. And then, so we kept, but then it just kept happening again and again and again, like arguing and then pulling ourselves out of it and like having a moment of sanity and clarity and then a couple hours later like getting back into it and I really did connect that to the Venus Uranus conjunction and because uh, I what I think last week I said the Venus Uranus conjunction is going to be like surprises in love and money and since it's in Taurus in your physical property right so what happened to me was you know getting into stupid arguments with my husband over nothing or rather you know we weren't actually arguing about anything in particular is that we were both getting triggered about random stuff from you know, the past, right? We were just getting, we were like triggering each other. Like these triggers, we it was like we weren't able to handle them the way we usually do. We weren't able to just let them go. We were like really needed to like vent and snip and snap. And it was just, ugh. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, right? We, we, you know, we're, you know, getting through it, getting through it, it's fine. It's like no big deal. It was just like a passing bubble, a passing like annoyance. Um, but the other thing is, um, you know, my car broke down yesterday and I was just laughing. I was like, of course, you know, Venus, Uranus and Taurus. Car breaks down, you know, surprise car bill. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and so this whole time, it's been this whole lesson of, um, like I keep getting the judgment card, right? The judgment card, which is like trying to portal up above all of these kind of petty mundane problems. It's almost like the, cause this is also, you know, happening in Gemini season and I love Gemini energy. It's one of my favorites. You know, I have a Gemini moon, so I don't say this to criticize Gemini energy at all, but it, it, Gemini, like in some of its kind of lower vibrational states can be kind of superficial and snippy and just petty, right? Gemini energy can be a little bit petty <laughs> um, when it's not like flourishing, right? Lower vi vi vibrational Gemini energy can be kind of petty and that's kind of what's been coming up and we're kind of portaling up through that and that's going to be a huge, huge theme because in a couple of days, you know, I mean, by the time you see this video, you're going to be already in the full moon the Sagittarius full moon vortex and that's going to be all about pulling you up above all of this so whatever petty bullshit is happening in your life you know whether it's like interpersonal conflict or a surprise bill or like something going wrong like plumbing problems electric electrical problems like electronic device problems like stuff with your computer your phone any of that it's like you're, you're portaling up through that this is the this is the time to rise above that and to really see things for what it is and i want to throw out there that this is to me really also connected to the saturn retrograde and the thing with the saturn retrograde you know i really wanted to make a video specifically on that maybe i still will but it just like hasn't been the right moment yet everything has been kind of um Like the energy is shifting so fast that I, it's like I can't land anywhere. <laughs> so I, I've, it's actually been kind of difficult for me, for me. That's why I haven't posted very much in the last couple of weeks because everything has just been a little bit all over the place. And I think everyone is feeling that in some fashion or another. And that's okay. That's just where we're at. We have to be very nimble and just kind of let all this energy flow through us. And if you can't like quite get settled into anything, it's fine. That's just kind of where we're at right now. So anyway, the Saturn retrograde that's going on all the way into the end of October it's giving us this illusion of the past coming back to haunt you, right? And the, the thing I want to emphasize is that, you know, some people, you could be having dreams about people from your past. You could be having triggers coming up from stuff that happened to you in, a ch in your childhood. You could be having like themes come up suddenly, like having to do something you thought you were done with, right? It's like you, you could be like, no, 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 I was done with this. I was done with this. Why is this thing coming back? It's an illusion, okay? Because just remember that the Saturn, like retrogrades, right? When planets go retrograde, of course, planets don't actually ever go backwards, right? This is really important to remember. Planets 
only go forwards, right? They go in one direction around the sun. They don't actually turn around and go backwards. The, the retrograde is an illusion and it's actually an illusion caused by us passing them by. This is kind of hard to explain. I'm not the best person to describe this because I'm not very good at spatial rotation, but do you, you know, like imagine this, well, let's change them around, right? Because Earth is more blue, right? And Saturn, I mean, he could kind of sort of be kind of yellow, right? So Saturn's out here. The Earth moves faster than Saturn around the sun. And you know, so Saturn's moving slowly, moving slowly, moving slowly. The Earth is picking up speed and passing him. And in the moment when the Earth passes by Saturn, that's why Saturn appears to, to go backwards. Uh, it's like, it's an illusion, right? An optical illusion. It's just like when, if you've ever been sitting in the passenger seat of a car, and you're stopped at a red light and your driver starts moving kind of before you pay attention and you don't really realize you're moving forward yet and if you're looking at the car next to you right it can suddenly look like the car next to you is moving backwards and it could be that moment of like whoa what, what's going on why is that car backing up all of a sudden but really it's because you're moving forward so it's that kind of optical illusion and i just want to like really emphasize this because we're all having these, the Saturn retrograde is bringing things up from the past and it can, that can be really triggering, right? And it could make you wonder like, oh my God, am I backsliding? Oh my God, is it 10 steps back? It's like, no, you are actually moving forwards. It just doesn't look like that right now. Your forward momentum, your forward movement, you're actually passing Saturn by, right? And it just looks like this stuff from the past is coming back. It just looks like this stuff. It's, it's all an illusion. You're actually, just remember, you are moving forward. You are moving forward. You're always moving forward. You're spiraling onwards and upwards it just and if it doesn't look like that if you're looking around you and you're seeing stuff from the past come up as an optical illusion right it's it's just that's just that's just the energy that's how things are flowing and it's it's okay it's all right because i actually see this whole saturn retrograde as uh, in my head i've been calling it the great retrospective <laughs> the great retrospective because the entire retrograde is happening in aquarius so it's just <laughs> I'm seeing in my head like rewinding a tape. You remember watching movies on a VHS tape, right? And you could watch them in rewind. I used to do that when I was a kid. I used to watch a whole, I'd watch a movie and then I'd watch it in rewind, the whole thing. It's so right now it's a little bit like you're watching a movie in rewind, you're seeing the whole thing play out backwards. Um, and it's to give you just a different perspective on things and it's to like re, to review, to integrate, to kind of finish something up. So this whole period between now and the end of October is this, review and integration period of anything to do with all of these Saturn and Aquarius stuff. So that's my thoughts on that. Okay. Now, now let's look at moving forward. Now we're moving forward, um, moving from this Venus Uranus conjunction and moving into the vortex of the Sagittarius full moon and what else is happening this week. So, Today is the 12th is Sunday. So tomorrow Mercury re-enters Gemini. So that's getting some good forward momentum. Mercury entering Gemini is gonna be nice and light and breezy, just like it was a little bit ago. Um, so that's another thing to do with the, um, this like stuff from the past, right? It's it's also was a little bit connected to the Mercury retrograde, which we're done with, but of course Mercury is still retracing the path, right? Mercury has already moved into Gemini, doing it again, kind of having a little bit of a deja vu, a little bit of a replay. So I'm really happy to see Mercury moving into Gemini. That's gonna be really nice. And that's happening at the same time as the Sagittarius full moon. I wrote down it's happening on the 13th and the 14th because in my time zone, it's happening at like 3 a.m. or 4 or 4 a.m. or something on the 14th. So that means all day on the 13th, all day Monday, basically from when you see this video, it's gonna be Sagittarius full moon time. And I have a, actually a brand new deck for this. I, I literally just got it on my mailbox right now. I haven't even opened it. The Sacred Sea Oracle. It says down here, dive into the depths of your cosmic soul. I bought this on a complete impulse, which is, I mean, how I buy most of my decks, so I don't even know what's in it. Opening it for the first time, <laughs> taking the plastic off. I'm just gonna go ahead and shuffle this, and ooh, it's all, I love new decks. All, all crinkly, <laughs> all crinkly and crackly. It's super hard to shuffle. It's, it's, this is one of those ones that has like the coated, um, shiny stuff on the edges. Sagittarius full moon. Oh, 
Okay, I have no idea what these cards are like, but man, I love the art on the back. I just want to show you. Look at that. So pretty. I'm just going to flip these up and just read them. I don't know anything about this deck, so let's just see what we got. <laughs> Priestess of Transition. Honor Individuality. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Priestess of Transition. That Sagittarius full moon. Um, this is like a transition into a higher state of consciousness, right? It, it, this is like, and you know, with that Sagittarius energy, it can be that focus on like individual freedom, right? And I keep getting that judgment card. I've been getting the judgment card and this is what it's like to me. It's like portaling up into this higher level of freedom, but it's like you are your own priestess for this. You are your own mystic. You are your own guide. You are your own guide through this period of, of initiation. And you know, I think one of the things that's been happening with the Venus Uranus conjunction and everybody getting kind of snippy with each other <laughs> is um, this probably been exacerbated, ex exacerbated, exacerbated. I can't pronounce that right now. <laughs> Moving on. Um, it's been, you know, made a little bit more intense by the Sagittarius full moon energy because it's like people, we want to be highly individuated right now and we kind of don't want to take advice from others and we're kind of really highly sensitive to criticism and we're highly sensitive and triggered by anything that could threaten our freedom or that freedom or our, our perception of our freedom, right? We, we are like really, really, really on this. Um, it's even a little bit self-centered. I'm even hearing like me, me, me in my head and that's not bad, right? That's not bad. I think we could actually really, really use this, especially because uh, there were so many themes. If you were to go back and like listen to some of the weekly readings I did in January, February, March, even in April, there were so many themes of like the collective and worrying about everybody else and like dealing with self and other and all that stuff. And of course, Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius. So it's, you know, the, the connection to the collective. And it's like, this is, this is the time it's like, it is actually healing to focus on the self for now. Right. And it is important to focus on this self empowerment. And of course, next week we're going to be talking about the solstice. So to empower the self to empower yourself to transition into your own higher state of consciousness before we move into the, the the solstice, it's like, then you can actually take, this is honestly a little bit like every man for himself type of energy, but it that doesn't have to be in a bad way. Of course, that can be, that, that kind of, um, that kind of energy, that kind of theme, that kind of thinking can be low vibe, right? I think the challenge for us right now is to how, how to like focus on the self in a way that is not threatening to anyone else, right? Because the lower, the, like, one of the lower functions of Sagittarius, like when Sagittarius is not functioning well, it can be the focus on personal freedom at the expense of others. So that can kind of be coming up where someone, you know, might want to burn the world down just so that they can be free. But that's not Sagittarius at its best, right? To get to the higher frequencies of Sagittarius and over the Sagittarius full moon, we want to focus on how you can have like your own personal freedom in a way that, well, I mean, a kind of neutral way is to have personal freedom in a way that just doesn't affect anybody else. But what if you can have personal freedom in a way that does actually serve everyone else? Like how you, if your own personal freedom is, is what's best for everyone, that's the trick. And that might be kind of strange. It might be like, how do we get there? Right. But that this is actually a really big, <laughs> a really big theme, a really big topic. I think for humanity as a whole, like for this entire century, even if I want to get really dramatic about it. Right. Um, you can see how this is connected to Aquarius to, to how Saturn is in Aquarius. And it, it's like, how do we all find our individuality? How do we all honor our own personal freedom and in a way that also empowers everyone else? Right. Um, so there's going to be a big focus on discovering who you really are. And it's like you guys watching this, right? I feel like you've already been on this huge journey of discovering who you really are and peeling back the layers of all kinds of conditioning and all everything like that. So, so it's like for you guys specifically, you're in a higher, kind of like a higher, higher iteration of that, a higher iteration of that. So it doesn't matter how many times before you've peeled back the layers of the onion to discover who you truly are, how many times you've stepped away from social conditioning, how many, how, 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 fringe you are, right? How weird you are, how unique you are, how idiosyncratic you are. It's like there's even something deeper here to discover about who you are. And there might be a little bit of a thing here about 
for for this week, you could be highly, highly sensitive to criticism, even things that, because it's funny, at the same time, people around you might be like trying to give you advice, right? Trying to tell you how, and the thing is the advice might be really good. It, it's almost certainly well-meaning. It could be really good advice. You really have to feel into, is the advice for me right now? It's like, you know that feeling when you're like 18, you're graduating high school and you're trying to figure out what to do with the rest of your life and it's like literally everybody and their uncle has an opinion about what, how you should organize your life, like what school you should go to, if you should take a gap year, if you should travel, how you should manage your money, what kind of job you should get, right? When you're, when you're like graduating high school, everyone has an opinion about what you should do and it's hard because how do you find your own, especially when you're 18, right? How do you find your voice? How do you find your own self when everyone is telling you what to do? And it's like, the, the, I think the... The people who set themselves up for the greatest success when they're like, you know, 17, 18, 19 are the ones who can really figure out like, this is how I want my life to be and I'm this is how I'm going to make it work, right? And to understand that all of the advice that you're hearing, 99% of it is well-meaning and a lot of it is like logical, sensical, you know, generally good advice, but just just because advice is good doesn't mean it's relevant for you to take right now. So there's a big discerning there of like kind of tuning out the noise and uh, this deeper layer of challenge of just coming back to your own self, right? Um, and as I say that, I look down at the heart chakra gateway, love, capacity, expansion, tuning into the heart center, right? Getting centered in the heart. Um, I'm looking at the art here. I, I'm not sure what this is meant to represent, but to me, it actually reminds me a little bit like a roller coaster. All these different things going around. I could almost see myself riding around. So if life is feeling like a roller coaster, right? If you feel like you're in the chaos, if everyone around you has too many opinions and they keep telling them, they keep sharing their opinions with you, right? If things keep happening, Where's your refuge? Your refuge is in your heart center. Your refuge is in your heart center. Moon queen of the sea. Reclaim receptivity. Reclaim receptivity. So this is where the balance comes in. And this is why it's, it's so cool that this heart chakra card is coming out in order to bring in this balance because this kind of leads me into something I was going to try to articulate next. It's that as we're in this whole thing of focusing on the self, kind of trying to discern and let go of other people's opinions and other people's advice, that there, there's a little bit of like a, eh, like there's a, there's a potential there for that to almost go too far, right? To kind of drop into the lower frequencies of the Sagittarius full moon energy where it's kind of... um you know, personal freedom at, at the expense of others. And that can even be personal freedom at the expense of yourself. So I mean to like balance this out, balance this out, balance this out by saying, say you just had a hundred people give you a hundred pieces of advice and some of them were maybe kind of triggering and you've kind of just decided, I'm just going to let it all go. I'm going to go my own way. But then as the week goes on, there's maybe one piece of advice that keeps coming back to your mind and you go, hmm, maybe that person really, maybe that is a really good point. Maybe that is for me. Maybe I really should do that. Maybe that is something I need to look at, right? And it could be something about like changing how you clean your floor or um, adjusting something about how you do your job or like something personal about your inner work or something about how you speak to others. It can be like literally anything, right? Um, but there there could be something that you, I, 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 and honestly, I'm the way I'm feeling this is we're, even as we're all going through this process of kind of tuning out the noise from others and tuning out all of this kind of even unsolicited advice we're, we're receiving, there could be one thing that everyone is receiving that is, it's like, okay, but that's the one piece of advice that maybe is relevant for you right now. And so it's a kind of you using your own discernment to kind of select the reflections that are meant for you. Use your own discernment to select the reflections that are meant for you. And I mean, this card, this is also like the Queen of Cups, which is something I've been has been popping up a lot for me the last couple of days. Reclaim receptivity. This is going to this is going to be, you know, in conjunction with this heart energy allowing you to drop like drop out of being triggered by what other people are saying. <laughs> um drop out of 
kind of that like knee-jerk reaction and kind of tempers <laughs> and stuff like that and just allowing things to flow through you a lot and so this is I've been talking a lot about like interpersonal relationships and that's the Venus Uranus energy still happening right but it's like and this doesn't have to be playing out on a on like a human to human level this can be playing out on a more cosmic level you know when i'm talking about all these different uh, like you know advice and ideas coming at you that doesn't just include ideas coming from individuals that you talk to personally this is also like at you know all the advice you see scrolling through instagram and all the advice you see on all the youtube videos right everybody has an opinion everyone's putting their opinion out there <laughs> um, and it's all, this is also just all of the energy that you're being bombarded with. And I still want to talk about the, like the energy shifting towards the end of the week, because there's the energy bombardment is basically not going to slow down until after the solstice. <laughs> there's going to be an energetic bombardment and it's like eight of wands, right? Just like coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. And There could be a feeling like I need to react to all of this energy or I need to act on all of this energy. This is like, you know, inspiration you're receiving, downloads you're receiving, messages you're receiving, all of it. And it can be like, I need to react, I need to do, I need to do this. But it's like, what if you just let it all flow through you? What if I'm seeing like, you know, like a, like a screen door, like a screen door, just the wind flowing through the screen door. Can you be like mesh? <laughs> can you be just permeable and just let it all flow through you just let it all full flow through you and then once it's like done flowing through you whenever that is maybe maybe it's going to be two weeks or so until it's done flowing through you but eventually like to to like trust in the integration process is what this feels like trust in your own integration process so there's going to be so many activations and energies and opinions and thoughts and ideas and blah 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 blah, blah everything kind of hitting you all at once and it's like just let it all flow through you you don't need to do you don't need to act on or deal with you don't need to deal with all of the energy all at once in fact most of the energy you're not going to really need to do anything with just to like observe it and let it flow by just let it all flow through you flow through you flow through you i think the more you can just allow everything to flow through you that is going to be the single most helpful <laughs> thing that we can all allow ourselves to do over the next couple of weeks. Just let it all flow through. Just let the chaos and the debris and the energy and the opinions and the thoughts and the feelings and just, <laughs> just, whoosh, just let it all flow through. And eventually you'll start to notice the things that have stuck around um, or the things that are just drawing you in on a level like of almost like compulsion, right? And those will be the things that you ultimately act on or work through or react to or whatever um but it's like it doesn't need to be this immediate thing yeah and i'm just on on kind uh, on a similar note to that i just want to mention that with the saturn retrograde <sighs> the saturn retrograde is you know like most saturnian things is trying to get us to release our attachment to the thing we are most attached to <laughs> so that is so uncomfortable and that is why everyone like dislikes saturn transits because saturn essentially pinpoints the thing that we want the most or the thing that we are putting a ton of focus and energy on and then saturn comes along and says no you have to let that go <laughs> And that's why, you know, that's why we don't always like Saturn, right? That's why we don't like it. Because you can go, it can be feelings of, how dare you tell me that the thing I care about the most is something I shouldn't care about. Right? That's how that's how we react to Saturn. We go like, or how dare you tell me that I need to let go of this thing. This thing is so important to me. Without this thing, I might die. Like without this, it's like, I need this thing. I need this thing. This thing is so important to me. And Saturn says, no, it's not. Saturn says, no, you have to let that thing go. But, you know, Saturn also says in letting it go, that's when you're able to receive it. You let it go when you receive, like, you, after you let it go, then you receive it. I don't, like, that's the kind of thing that only makes sense after you've experienced that in life, right? And I've, I experienced that. I mean, the biggest example I have of that is um, before my husband and I got together, we both independently came to this frame of mind where we were like, that's it. I'm just going to be single. I, I'm done. I'm done with romance. I'm done with like relationships. That's it. I'm cool. By my, I'm just going to be by myself. I'm just going to be single. I don't need anybody. I'm never going to be in a relationship again. We're like we both independently were just in that frame of frame of mind. And then, and then like, since we had let go of this need to find our 
person, right? We had let go of the need to find our person. And that is when we immediately came together. That's like when we found each other because we had like, we'd stopped trying. We had stopped trying to find each other. We were, we said, we're okay with just being alone. And then bam, now we're together. So that, that, that I always think about that. So whenever I hear advice about how, you know, let go and then receive it, right? <laughs> let go of the desire to find it. Let go of the desire to create it. Let go of the need to have it. And as soon as you actually fully and truly let it go, that's when you receive it. So it doesn't have to be love or romance, right? It's also like money or some kind of project you're working on, whatever you're trying to manifest, whatever you're trying to want, the Saturn retrograde is going to try to make you let go of that. Try to make, make you let go of working towards it. Try to make you let go, let go, let go, surrender, surrender, surrender. And here's the thing. It's not because the universe doesn't want you to have the thing. The universe actually wants you to let go so you can receive it right? So you can receive it. So that's going to be a different thing for everyone, but that's going to be playing out in the background here. And I think I'm talking about this again. I know I talked about that last week a little bit, but it, it's coming up again because those type of feelings of why do I have to let go of this thing that I want so bad, that that's going to be triggered this week, right? It's going to be triggered this week. So I want to move into... <laughs> you know, why am I talking about how intense the week is going to be? So if you can already see here, other uh, stuff I wrote down on Thursday, the sun is trying Saturn, right? And on this, at the same time, the sun is square Neptune because Saturn is going to be at 25 degrees Aquarius and Neptune is at 25 degrees Pisces. So the sun is going to be at 25 degrees Gemini, <laughs> trining Saturn, trining Neptune. So this to have it to have like, the sun aspecting Saturn and Neptune at the same time like guys I don't even know that's why I'm gonna get some cards because this is gonna be this is gonna be something <laughs> let me get some tarot cards on this because Saturn bringing through everything I was just describing with that influence and actually you know what Saturn is like let go let go let go Saturn says surrender surrender but Neptune says open up to receive, right? Neptune says, focus on your, your emotions and drop into your heart center. <clears throat> so very interesting. And then, you know, two days later at the end of the week, Venus is going to be squaring Saturn as well. <laughs> um, so anybody who really felt the Venus Uranus conjunction really intensely, and, and if you're having like interpersonal conflicts or money conflicts or you know things going wrong in the physical that could ripple out all the way for another week like if you're this isn't going to be for everybody buddy right but if it's like really hitting you really hard um next week when the venus squares saturn it's that's going to be like the clincher that's when things are going to like they might get worse before they get better but they do get better after this right once venus passes passes the square with saturn if there, if it is, it, this is not for everybody. I want to be very clear. This is just for somebody who's like really in it right now. Somebody who really got hit hard by the Venus energy, right? It might get worse before it gets better, but it does get better essentially after next week. <laughs> so hang in there for one more week. Once we get into, you know, the cancer season, basically after the solstice, things are going to get better. Things are, things are going to get better. Something might just have to come to a head. The example I'm actually seeing in my head is like popping a zit. <laughs> so kind of gross, right? And of course, after you pop the zit, then, you know, your skin needs to heal. And it's all kind of gross and uncomfortable and not good. But so for somebody, for somebody, things might need to get worse before they get better, but that's okay. It's because you're like purging like the pus, like purging the bacteria, right? You're popping the zit. So and for others, this could be like a simple echo. Like I wouldn't be surprised if next weekend, you know, I get into another little like stupid argument with my husband because of the Venus square Saturn. Right? <laughs> um, it, it could be echoing what we experienced this weekend, um, but it's all going to be fine. And then that energy is going to be shifting out because Venus will be moving on um, basically pretty quickly going to be entering Gemini. So yeah, so let's focus on what's happening around like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with, man, I got cards coming out everywhere let's just start over <laughs> with the sun aspecting saturn and neptune it's gonna be weird it's gonna be confusing because whenever neptune is involved things are confusing but there is also this element of like with neptune there's also this element of like deep spirituality and destiny I mean, shit, for somebody, this could be a, like, 
like a moment of destiny. Like a moment of destiny, like... G getting the dream job, meeting your person, rescuing a cat off the side of the road, right? And that cat going off to be your best friend. Like, this could be like a meeting of destiny. For others, it could feel like... <sighs> For others, it could feel like some kind of burden being laid upon you, but it's just... How to describe... Anything that plays out with this energy towards the end of this, so like the second half of this week, anything that plays out with this energy, it's it's part of the energetic puzzle that you're working through in your life. It's part of the energetic puzzle that your soul is working through. So it is, it, it you're not being punished. It, nothing bad is happening to you. It is your soul working through some energy and, and that's it. It's your soul working through some energy. Uh, two of cups. Oh my God. So what did I just say? Like a, a meeting with destiny or like, you know, meeting your person, meeting your soulmate, however you think of them. Um, meeting, like rescuing a cat on the side of the road. This is, this is two of cups. These are actually, I think these are lovebirds here. That doesn't make any sense. They can't be lovebirds. This is the Pacific Northwest tarot. What type of birds are these? I live in the Pacific Northwest and I've never seen birds of this color here. I'm super curious. I need to look at this thing. I need to look at the book. Because I looked at that and I was like, those are tropical birds. But I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. There's no tropical birds here. <laughs> this is not the tropics. Violet green swallows. Connection, companionship, partnership, attraction, chemistry, a bond, a close relationship, and love. The swallows' paths crossed and everything changed for both of them. Had the wind not carried her a little further than she had planned to go, or had yesterday's storm not forced him to land early, they would never have encountered one another. He had not twittered loudly as he sunbathed. Had he not twittered loudly as they sunbathed, they would never have collected grass or twigs or feathers together. Had she not swooped past at precisely the right moment to catch his man, I can't speak, to catch his showy display, they would not later shape their collection into a cup in that hollow fur. Had her first return display to him not complimented the choreography of his own, they would never have bonded or laid eggs or incubated them or hunted for insects to feed their brood. But all those things conspired to occur. Whether through chance, serendipity, or fate, their paths didn't just cross, they converged. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> So following, you know, taking the message that I had, you know, received before even pulling the card and then thinking about that this is like Neptune is involved here, right? And Saturn, this is like the convergence of Neptune and Saturn in this weird way. It's like Neptune and Saturn are sitting in parallel signs, like side by side signs, sorry, side by side Aquarius and, and Pisces, right? Next to each other, sitting side by side at the same degree, sitting next to each other and then being like pulled together by the sun. That's, <laughs> that's this convergence, right? This convergence of destiny, convergence of destiny, this is way more positive than I thought it was going to be. Um, so, but it's like reading that description in the book, right? It was like all of these things happened to these two birds, right? There was a storm and one of them had to land early and the other one got like blown off course and like all these things happen. Just think of all the weird things that can happen in your life. And you, when they're happening, it's like if your flight is delayed or maybe there's a storm and your flight like has to land in a different city um, or your car breaks down somewhere and you end up having to do this or something happens and you can't do that. So you have to do this instead, right? All the weird things that throw your life off course. What if they're not throwing your life off course? What if they're throwing you on course? What if they're throwing you to meet your love bird, <laughs> right? And so for somebody, this could absolutely play out like as a romantic connection. Like, I mean, the, the two of cups coming out, we have these little love birds here. I mean, I know they're not love birds, but they are love birds, right? <laughs> Th this can absolutely play out like that, but it doesn't have to be like that. This can be anything, right? This could be a career thing. This could be um, a business thing. This could be a money thing. This could be like a spiritual thing, right? Having a dream where you meet some, where you meet a, a non-physical being, right? It could be friendship. It could be with animals. It could be just being in the right place in the right time. So this is the thing to remember. Honestly, I don't even want any more cards on this. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, anything that seems to be disrupting your life, anything that seems to be throwing things out of balance, anything that seems to be dragging you off course, no, it's putting you back on course. It is putting you where you need to be. This is going to be, it's going to be needing to trust 
that everything is happening for a reason and everything is happening for the best and everything, it won't make sense, right? Like if your flight gets delayed or your flight lands in a city you didn't wanna be, you'd be like, why am I here? This is insane, I shouldn't be here, everything is wrong, but what if it, everything is right? What if everything is right? What if that is exactly where you're supposed to be, right? And maybe the only way to get you there was to have a storm throw up in your way so that your flight would have to land in the wrong city, right? Maybe that was the only way to get you there, but it, didn't, it doesn't matter how you got there. It only matters that you're there. It doesn't matter how you got there. It doesn't matter all the weird, stupid stuff that happened in your life to put you where you are. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And in a way that won't make sense to your linear mind, your human self is gonna be all like, having all these opinions, <laughs> right? Your human mind is gonna have all these opinions about how things are supposed to be, but it's like, none of that matters to your soul. Your soul is like, I'm putting you exactly where you're supposed to be. Right place, right time. It might not make, make any sense to you, but it's perfect, right? Divine convergence. <laughs> Divine convergence is what I'm gonna call this. And how beautiful is that after, like, whoa, my ear just started ringing. And that's been happening. Have I been saying that? like? in almost all of my videos lately? Is that starting to happen a lot? Weird. Um, I just I just realized that might be starting to get repetitive. Suddenly my ears ringing during um, readings and it derails me a little bit. It makes me lose my thought process and now I don't know what I was saying. So I'm actually gonna just take that as a sign that my work here is done. I'm gonna end the reading there. Um, just, I love you guys so much. This is going to be an exciting ride. The more we can just let go and surrender and scream our heads off as we go down the roller coaster ride, the better this is gonna be for our own personal enjoyment. So I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.